So today we have Coach Kwan and Coach Daniel to be here to share with us how do we float. Let's put our hands together to welcome Coach Kwan. Hello. Hello, hello, MC Jolie. Thank you for the introduction. It's lovely. Okay. Thank you for being here as well. So uh, without further ado, I pass the screen to you. All right. All right. Thank you. See you later. All right. All right. Welcome, kids. Good afternoon. Once again, I'm Coach Kwan from Swing Tail. Okay. Just now, the three session was amazing. We are looking at the jugglers, Yang Wei, and then there's Elvin's teaching the handstands, and then there's Teacher Lucky, okay, or Isaac was doing the balloon. It was so entertaining, even for me. I'm pretty sure the children will love it even more. Right. So in this session, I'm going to talk about swim science, and I hope I could bring value to all of you, and we can learn this together. Okay. Before we go into it, now, student, I will have shared about 20 minutes of swim science this session, and after that, the next 20 minutes. It will be Coach Bagel doing some exercise just like Coach Elvin previously teaching the handstand. Okay, so please ready yoga mat, ready your water bottle, and after my session, we will transition straight into Coach Bagel. Okay, so that's it. Now let's get right into my topic of the day. All right. So who here is know how to swim? Who here doesn't know how to swim? Whether you know how to swim or you doesn't, I'm pretty sure we all have been to swimming pool to enjoy ourselves before. Am I right? And we have at least tried to float on our back. And this is what we're going to talk about today. Comment below. Share with me what are the ways that you do to float on your back. Okay. So what other ways that you do? Please let me know so that we could talk about it. Next. So in my session, in my session here, there are three phases, three parts. We're going to talk about swimming. We are going to talk about science and how swim science related to our everyday life. How does it apply to our everyday life? Now, let's get right into the science part. Now, as a coach, when I teach, there are three elements I look into my student to make sure that they can do a beautiful floating. Okay, so one of it is to check the position, how your head, how your hips position could affect your floating. The next one, how movement, how moving your hands and the legs could help you to move around. And last but not least, it's the air. How by breathing in the air, controlling the amount of air you're able to keep yourself floating. And yes, yeah, Shamina Kashmir, yes. Seems like you can swim a bit. That's awesome. All right. And hello, hello, Google Kids and Mani. So right now, for the topic of today, we're going to go deep, deep into the air part. How air could makes us float or sink. Okay, you are ready? Let's get right into it. So, right now, students, let us all imagine that, we, not imagine, we, we have our lungs here, right beneath our chest, okay? Now, let's imagine your chest is like two big balloons. It's like two big balloons here, okay? And it begins with resting point. Now, students, if you are ready, if you are there behind the screen, let's do this together with me. Put both your hands on your chest. Put it both on your chest. Now, do it together with me. Take a deep breath. You can feel that your chest is expanding, all right? Now, exhale. Feel your chest sinking. One more time. Take a deep breath. Breathe in. Feel your chest, your lungs. The balloon is expanding. Breathe out. The lungs are shrinking. The balloon is shrinking. And one last time. Take a deep breath. Feel it out in, right? Okay. And so right now, I would like all of us students here, or your parents, imagine your lungs is like two big balloons. Nice. Hi, Amanda. Kaya. Kaya. Thank you. Thank you. And this is the more specific versions of how your lungs looks like when you breathe in. When you take a deep breath, your lungs expand upward and downward. Okay. And when you exhale, your lungs shrink inward and upward. 
Now, all of us know, all of us here knows that when you put a balloon in the pool or on top of the water, it floats, it floats. Now, let's further imagine the next step, all right? Imagine right now the balloon is tied to a small weight, it kind of represents your body, okay? And even though, even though it's tied to a weight, more air, the balloon still can float. And if, and if the balloon is empty of less air, it will sink, it will sink. Nice. Okay, good. Now, next one. When you breathe in and hold your breath, student, what will happen? Would you be sinking or would you be floating? Please comment. Let me know below what will happen. Okay. When you breathe in and hold your breath, would you be sinking or would you be floating? Please let me know. All right. Thank you, Samuel, for tuning in. Nice. Yes, Dashi. Dashini said, more as floats. That's amazing. Thank you, Dashini. Oh, my dance has magic. All right. Nice. Nice. As Wei said, yes, when you breathe in and hold your breath, you will stay afloat. Thank you. And Paris too. And the other way around, when you breathe out, you will sink. You will sink. So now to prove, we all know that more air floats, less air sink. Okay? In this session here, I would like to prove to you that our understanding is correct. Okay, we're gonna do some experiment. Oh, thank you, Samantha, Popoa, Wendy Oyes, Amanda, and everyone else. Okay, in this experiment, we're gonna take a look how more air floats, less air sink. Now, there's a few things I have prepared. In here, you can see a bucket here. The bucket represents the swimming pool that you will be swimming in. The water, and of course, is the water in the swimming pool. The weight here, the glass. The bottom of the glass here represents the weight. Okay, it represents the weight. It's like um, for us, imagine it's your bone, it's your muscle, and everything else. Last but not least, the most important part of our experiment here is the plastic container. How you sell bottle here? Okay, so what does this represent? It represents your lungs. Okay, remember just now the lungs is kind of like a balloon. It's the same thing, okay? These are the four main things that we have to carry. So, in this experiment, we're going to versus two things. How more air related to less air, okay? What will happen when there's more air? And what will happen when there's less air in the bottle? Now, take a look. Let's start with less air, okay? So, you can see the balloon is filled with less air, or I mean a plastic container. It sinks, carrying the weight, it sinks down, okay? So the plastic container here represents our lungs. When we have less air in our lungs or in the balloons, it just sinks down, okay? And up next, let's look at the next experiment here. When the plastic container is filled with air, it will, it floats. Carrying the weight, although the glass is quite heavy, it keeps the glass floating right here. All right? Let's see one more time. If you have a if your lungs full of air, it's filled up, it will be able to carry the weight. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mahi. And now, so in this experiment, experiment time, we have learned that more air. We are going to float. Less air, you will sink down. Okay? And I hope this proof of our understanding here. Now, so just now we're talking about the science part. Let's get right into the swimming part. How the knowledge we learned just now applies to our swimming. So in here, right now, you'll see this is Coach Amelia. This is Coach Amelia, okay? He's, he's trying to show you more air floats, less air sink. If you can take a look, she exhale, the body sink. And now right at the beginning again, she take a deep breath, the body floats beautifully at the top, exhale, body sink down. Let's see you one last time. Exhale, 
Just keep our body sitting down and inhale. The body close. This is something that children you could try next time when you go to the swimming pool. Okay, it is very enjoyable, especially when you lie down on your back and look at the sun. Look at the sky. Okay. So these are all the things we learn. Breathe in. We have more air, and therefore we float. And we breathe out. Less air, therefore we sink. That's it. That's it. How does it apply to swimming? Thank you. And let's go. Let's go right into the final part. Okay. How does swim science applies our life in our life? Okay. Now, student, there is these two vehicles here. Please comment below. What do you think these two things is? Please let me know. Okay. What is these two things here is about? Okay. This two thing is something that operates in the ocean. It can control its height. It can stay afloat at the water surface, or it can sink down. Okay. It was created at the nineties, beginning used for war, but now it was used to discover the ocean. Okay, good. Nice. Sean say it's a submarine. Correct. Exactly. It is a submarine. Nice. Thank you, Jennifer. Exactly. It's a submarine. This is what I'm going to share about. Now, we all know here that submarine could stay afloat or even sink down to a certain depth. But how do they do it? Okay. What's the trick behind it? Let's get right into it based on more air float, less air sink. Thank you, Pohua, Brandon. <laughs> Cherry, where you? Thank you, Samuels. Yes, it is submarine. Now, if you look at this circle here, if you look at this circle here, it's filled with yellow and it's filled with blue. The yellow represents the air. So the air we have, the blue represents the water in it. Okay? The yellow thing that fills the, either the air or the water, it's called the ballast tank. It is called a ballast tank. Okay? And it's what it's helped to control the buoyancy, how it stays up and above and below. At the very top, if you see at the very top, it's filled with the, the yellow color, which is air. When it's full of air, it was floating right at the water surface beautifully, stationary there. And if they decide, the submarine decide to sink down, the captain decide to go under the water to explore, they will press the button, beep, pushing the airs up and fill it in with water. Okay, the more water it is inside the ballast tank, the submarine will slowly sink and sink and sink to a certain depth, okay, to move around. And after that, when they decide to, the submarine decide to come up once again, we will pump in the air inside the ballast tank, okay, some store air, pushing the water up. And the submarine will slowly, slowly float up again until the tank is fully filled with air. The submarine rise to their surface. Okay. And that is how submarine applies on the air's concept to keep itself floating at the top or sink down to the depth that they like. Okay. And I hope you learned something today. All right. Thank you for all the comments. All right. This is some extra some extra knowledge that we will be learning here what is the main the air made of okay we all know here that we need air to breathe okay we can eat we can starve we can don't eat for seven days to stay alive we can don't consume water for two days to keep ourselves alive but air how long how long do you think we can keep alive stay alive without having air okay so please let me know how long we can stay alive without having air and air is a big component for us to keep ourselves alive and functioning in our body but but in the air there is so many components there's so many compositions the 78 percent is made of nitrogen 21 is oxygen and the rest carbon dioxide and other gases is one percent okay we all know that we need air to stay alive but to be more precise to be more precise our body needs oxygen okay oxygen that's the thing that keeps us from going on when oxygen goes into our bloodstreams it supplies it to our body cells and keep us working very hard and staying alive 
All right, Sean says one minute. Jessica, one minute. Shamina, you have 40 seconds. Jennifer, 10 minutes. Wow, that's a variety of answer here. Yes, it is amazing, okay? Now for me, personally, I am a swimmer myself and I have represented Malaysia for underwater hockey. In my training, I was able to hold my breath. No breathing, just holding my breath for four and a half minutes. I don't need to breathe for four and a half minutes while staying conscious, okay? So after that, high chance I need to come out to breathe. If not, I'll black out. Okay. But for most people, one minute, two minutes, they'll be suffering. They'll start to faint up already. And even after that, they can still keep the brain active for another five, three to five more minutes, okay? And this is how important, deep is how important air is to our body. And thank you, Shamina. Yes, oxygen are made by trees. Exactly. Okay. And so, hope you all learn here. Not that we really need air to breathe. So, what we really need is the oxygen in the air. Okay. Now, quiz time. Let's get right into our quiz time. Please comment below and let me know all the answers that you have. Are you ready, students and <laughs> parents? If you're ready, let's give it a go. Right now, so Moana and Hey Hey wants to stay floating up in the middle of the sea. What should she do? Should she breathe in to keep herself staying afloat or should she breathe out? Okay, I'm pretty sure all of us have seen this movie before. It's Moana from Disney. It is amazing. I myself enjoy it a lot. All right, you can see here this is the part where he got she got pushed into the ocean. As you can see, she's moving her hands and struggling with her legs to keep herself floating. What else? Can she do to make sure that she floats better? Okay. Should she breathe in or should she breathe out? All right, Goku Kids said breathe in to stay afloat. Nice, Kelly Cobb. All right, breathe in, Vivian, breathe in. Sean, breathe in. John, thank you, Jin, breathe in. Everyone says breathe in. Exactly, because as we learned just now, when we breathe in, more air in our lungs, we are more buoyant. It's much easier for us to stay afloat. Just by breathing in and hold our breath, we can stay afloat for the next one, two hours, if you wish. That's it. And the last part, help explain to me, help share with me again, how does the submarine control its height? How does the submarine stay at the surface of the ocean? And how does the submarine decide to go deep into the ocean? Okay. What does the captain do? What the captain needs to do to make sure the submarine floats or sink or venture down to the depth of the ocean. Okay, please let me know. All right, Elise. Thank you. Yes, Wendy, breathing in for the, for the Moana. Thank you so much. Air. Okay, Jessica states air. Yes, the submarine depends on the air to keep itself floating or sinking. Exactly. Nice, that was so specific, Dashini. That's amazing. Yes, the ballast tank. It has a ballast tank that stores air or water to control its height, its depth, sorry, its depth in the ocean. Okay. Yes, Jessica states, let the air goes in, the submarine floats up, let the air out, the submarine goes down. Beautiful. Thank you so much. There we go. And that's it. That's it for my session. Thank you so much for tuning in. Okay, I really enjoy a lot. And I once again, thank you so much for the participation. So many comments. I love your energy here, students and parents. Okay. Now, up next, up next, I would like to introduce Coach Daniel Bagel. All right, Coach Daniel Bagel. So he is the ex-national swimmer of Malaysia and he has been representing represent Malaysia to the 2008 Olympic in Beijing. Okay, 2008 Olympic in Beijing. So he here right now will do some exercise with all of you what he has learned. Okay, ready your yoga mat students, ready your water bottle up next. Let us give a big warm welcome to Coach Daniel Bego. All right. Hey, kids. 
How are you guys doing? Okay. Hopefully you guys enjoyed Coach Kwan's session. I thought it was very, very informative. Okay. Uh, learning to float is definitely a very, very important part of swimming. It's the first thing we teach the minute you get into the pool. Okay. Again, uh, my name is Coach Daniel. Uh, you can call me Coach Bego, whichever one you like. And yes, I've been swimming for about 20 plus years. So most of my life uh, was spent in the pool. Okay. All right. So this time for my session, we're going to do the practical side of things. All right. So using a little bit more of our body. Now, first thing, okay, write in the comments. I'll try and respond as best as I can. Okay. What do you think is the most important thing, okay, in swimming? in order to balance ourselves, in order to, you know, help us move around. Okay, good. Uh, some of you may say, all right, the limbs, your hands, your legs, very, very correct, okay? The other thing that people tend to forget is our core muscles, okay? Now, the core muscles, can, it, if you can all write in the comments, where do you think the core muscles are? <laughs> All right. Yes, Brandon. That's it. That's right. Core muscles. Very, very important. Okay. So the core muscles are located in the midsection of your body. Okay. In the front, the side, and also your back. Okay. That whole part is your core muscle. Yes, your stomach. Okay. Now, this part here is going to help you swim well, swim efficiently, and swim fast. Okay. Now, you may ask, if we don't have a strong core, okay, you wouldn't even be able to stand up, All right? Most of you are sitting down in front of your laptop right now, okay? That is made possible by your strong core. Hi, Amanda, right? If you don't have your strong core, if you don't have your core activated, you're just gonna be like spaghetti. You're gonna flop to one side, flop to the other side, flop in front, flop backwards, okay? Standing up, sitting up, doing a lot of things that you do is made possible by your core muscles, yes abdominals, the tummy, all those names mean the same thing right over here, okay? So today, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you a couple exercises to actually help you strengthen those muscles, okay? Our muscles, our core muscles actually consist of quite a few muscles, not just one. The most popular one is when you see people having that six pack, okay? I know some kids who have some six pack, I know some adults have some six packs, okay? I, we all have the muscles, it's just that sometimes it's hidden under a little bit layer of fat. Okay, so don't worry, we all have it. Then you have your oblique muscles that run on the side of your tummy. Okay, that's those are the muscles that are going to help you twist. Okay, as you can see, very, very important. Then there's another inner layer of muscle right underneath the six pack. Now that one is going to help hold your body together. Okay, all right, now let's get into the exercises. I'm going to show the exercises first. Okay, and then after that, I want you to join me if you can. Very simple. All you need is maybe a mat on the floor is fine. You have a carpet, not to worry, okay? Or you don't have a carpet or anything like that. Very, very simple. We're not gonna move too much, okay? All right, now let's get into the exercises. Okay, first exercise, get on the floor, okay? Nice and comfortable, feet in front of you, okay? All right, now this position, if you're a gymnast or if you have any gymnastic training, okay, you'll be familiar with this. It is called the hollow hold position, all right? Now, I'm gonna show you the easiest version of it first, and then we're gonna move up in difficulty till it gets to the hardest one, okay? So first one, you're just gonna lie back, okay? Place your hands by your side, okay? And we are going to lift both our legs off the ground, there. Very, very simple, okay? Please go ahead and try this. You're gonna feel your stomach become quite stiff, quite tight, and if it does, then you're using the right muscles, okay? So this one is the easiest position. You have your hands supporting you behind, okay? Good. Next, we're moving on to something a little bit harder. This time, we're gonna take our hands off the ground, okay? So no more using our hands to support. Very easy, okay? So this is considered level two. Now, level two, hands off the ground, okay? All right, now it's gonna be a little bit harder, so try not to swing back and forth, okay? Try and hold it really, really still, because in swimming, we want our body, our torso, our core to be nice and strong, and we want our body to be nice and still. Okay, good. Now, 
Third level, okay? We're gonna bring this up another notch. This one, you're gonna have your hand directly above you pointing to the ceiling, okay? So, first level here, second level, third level, okay? You can have your hands up here. Now, this is gonna add extra weight to your upper body, so you're gonna have to work extra hard, okay, to keep that tum tummy nice and tight, okay? All right, good. Now, we are going into level four, all right? So this one, for me, I would consider is the hardest one. We're gonna use something called the streamlined position in swimming, okay? Streamlined means we wanna be able to make our body as small as possible so that we can move forward in the water with as little drag as possible, okay? So, level one, level two, level three, and then now level four, okay? Keep the toes nice and pointed, okay? Let's see who can point their toes as good as me, all right? If you can do it even better, good, all right? Here we go. Now, you may feel your body shaking a little bit like I am, all right? That means you are using a lot of your core and that's the good thing, okay? All right, good. So, that is the first exercise. Now, the second exercise, we're gonna be on our front, okay? And it's going to simulate freestyle swimming for those of you who don't know what freestyle swimming is it's basically on your front the other name for it is also called the front crawl because you're basically trying to crawl forward okay all right so what we're gonna do get onto your front okay get into what we call a push-up plank position all right yeah brandon you're not shaking good very very good okay so if you're strong you won't be able to shake okay all right, next one. We are moving on. Like I said, on a push-up plank position, okay? Knees off the ground. I'm gonna to turn to the side a little bit, okay? That's the position we wanna be in. Cool, all right, okay. Now, from here, you wanna make it a little bit easier. Open your legs slightly wider, okay? That's gonna help you balance a little bit more, all right? Now, what we're gonna do, like I said, we're gonna simulate the stroke of freestyle. What you're gonna do, I'm gonna take one hand off, Go one big circle, come back down, okay? Next one, next arm, and down, okay? Up and all the way down, up and all the way down, okay? So as you can see, that will actually give you a free simulation of the freestyle stroke. Very, very simple, right? Okay, next one. Now, we're gonna work on our legs a little bit this time, okay? Still gonna be working on our core, but we're gonna include the legs, all right? Okay, the easiest thing about this is we're gonna go back to, yes, high elbow freestyle. Somebody said in the comments, high elbow freestyle. I like that, okay, that's excellent. We'll talk about high elbow freestyle in a little bit maybe if I have a little bit more time. For now, I'm just gonna show you this one. This one's called the flutter kick, okay? Simple. Same thing, same four stages as the hollow hold. Okay, stage number one. Take your hand, support your body behind you. Okay, legs up, and this time, okay, we're gonna move our legs up and down. Okay, so yes, imagine you're in the water. This will be good for your backstroke, will be good for your freestyle. Okay, it's just up and down with the legs. Now you're gonna think, oh, that looks really easy. Trust me. You do it for more than, or about 30 seconds, it's cool. you're really going to feel it, okay, kids? All right, good. Keep those toes nice and pointed. Don't bend this. We're not trying to cycle. We're trying to flutter to kick, okay? Level one. Level two, same thing. Taking our hands off the ground, okay? And we're just gonna kick like this, all right? Level three, hands up, okay? Level four, in a streamlined position. Now, this is extremely, extremely hard. So if you guys want a challenge, let's see how many people can actually do this, okay? Good. Now, moving on, okay? We're going to our fourth exercise, okay? So we're going to our front again. This time, we're gonna lie flat on the ground, facing forward, okay? All right, down. Now, from here, okay? We're just going to lift our body off, lift our chest off the ground, lift our legs, 
It's okay. If you're a little bit tired, go ahead and rest a little bit. If you want to challenge yourself, keep up with me, okay? All right, so from here, we're going to put our hands forward. There. This is what we call the Superman hold position, all right? Because, all right, look, I'm just like Superman flying in the air, okay? Remember, don't let your legs touch the ground. As much as you can, bring your thighs off the ground, okay? Hands forward, all right? That wasn't too bad, right? <laughs> Okay, uh, don't worry if you're tired again, all right? Just take a little break. We can always continue again. Now, we're going to add a slight variation to the hollow hold position, okay? This one is going to simulate butterfly swimming. Now, butterfly swimming is considered the hardest stroke, okay? Because you have to get your whole body out of the water. You have to get both your hands out of the water, okay? And that's why it's considered quite hard. It is usually the last stroke we teach kids okay but no harm now the thing is the good thing is being uh to do it on land we can do it a lot easier okay so we're gonna get into the hollow hold position again right here superman uh, sorry superman hold okay and then now we are going to move our hands all the way back right here we're gonna squeeze your shoulder blades together okay and then we're gonna go all the way front again all the way back right all the way front this is going to help you with your butterfly so much when you get back to the pool okay all right good so now i've shown those four exercises i am going to do something <laughs> thank you thank you uh ding Siu ting all right thank you so much okay all right now we are going to go into what i usually do uh we call it circuit training Okay, those of you who haven't heard, we're going to do one exercise, we're going to rest, we do another exercise, and then rest, and then so on. Okay, now this way, we can actually exercise, have a little bit of rest, and still develop all those muscles that we talked about just now, especially our core. Okay, now, if you can, all you kids, all the adults, all the moms and dads, okay, we're going to stop typing a little bit, we're going to go with a little bit of exercise session. So what are you going to do? Get down on the ground, on your mat, on your carpet, anything. Okay, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go 30 seconds on, that means 30 seconds of the exercise, and then 30 seconds off, that means 30 seconds of rest, okay? We're gonna start from the first exercise all the way to the fourth exercise, okay? Now, again, I showed you different levels of difficulty just now. Do the one that suits you the best, okay? All right, here we go, okay? I'm gonna have a little bit of music playing, all right? So at the same time, we can hype ourselves up, follow the music, okay? I'm also gonna turn on my watch. Okay, give me a second. Okay, here we go. So, 30 seconds, okay? Five, four, three, two, one, and let's go. Okay, first exercise, the hollow hold. Easy, level two, level three, and level four. Now let's see how many people can hold it in level four for 30 seconds. Okay, hold it, hold it. Good. Hopefully all of you can actually do this. And 30 seconds. See, that was pretty easy, right? Okay, all right. So moving on, we're moving on to the front crawl uh, push-up plank. Got 20 seconds rest. Okay. Oh, this is going to be exciting. I want to see who can keep up with me. Okay. If you can keep up with me, keep write it in the comments when you are done with the set. Five seconds to go. Two, one, on your hands, on your feet, and go. So remember, keeping your body nice and straight. Okay. Try not to deviate too much. Look at my body. It's nice and straight. Okay. All the way down. All the way down. All the way around. Okay. Keep going. Remember, you're swimming freestyle. Last 10 seconds. Okay. Good job. Last two seconds. And rest. Good. Okay, now moving on to the third exercise. In the hollow hold position, but we are going to do flutter kick. Okay, so easy, good. You have it easy, we can do with a little bit more. Not a problem. Okay, 15 seconds to go. 
All right, come on, let's challenge. Let's see who can go on level four of this exercise and do it for the whole 30 seconds, okay? Two, one, and let's go. Legs up, streamline position, and kick, okay? Flutter kick, flutter kick. Move those legs, okay? Let's see who can point their toes better, all right? In order to swim well, you're going to have to have flexible ankles. Keep those toes pointed. We've got 15 seconds to go. Okay, keep moving, keep moving. Core nice and tight. If you want to cut, lightly tap your tummy, you're going to hear a very, like a hardish sound, okay? That. And rest. Okay, good. Now, back to the fourth exercise, okay? Remember, we're going to do a Superman hold, but with the variation for our butterfly technique. 15 seconds of rest to go. All right. Now, I do understand there's a little bit of a lag, so if I don't respond to you straight away, hopefully you'll understand, okay? All right, five seconds. Two, one, and go. Okay, here we go. Superman hold. Okay, and then now move your arms back. Move your arms forward. Arms back. Really, really squeeze your scapula together. Okay, all the way forward, all the way back. All the way forward, all the way back. 10 seconds to go. Keep up, keep up. <laughs> all right, here we go. Almost done, almost done. Okay, and rest. Well done, well done, well done. Okay, we're gonna lower down the volume a little bit. All right, how was that, everybody? Okay. Some people say that you can keep up. I like that. That was really, really good. Okay. Now it may not easy be easy for a beginner. Okay. That will actually help you get a really, really good head start from the when the pool opens. <laughs> That's Darshini. Okay. You're gonna feel it in your core a lot. That's why we do this. Okay. So now going back to what I made, uh, the comments I made about keep having a core strong when you're swimming. Okay. Is now. Imagine, uh, like what Coach Kwan said just now, a submarine, okay? I don't think anybody has seen a um, gummy submarine or a spaghetti submarine, okay? You got to keep it a little bit stronger, okay? So in order for our body to move forward straight and fast in the water, we have to keep this part strong, okay? All right. Now, I think that's it, guys. Okay, it was really, really good. Now I'm sweating. I don't know about you guys. I got a good workout there. Okay, all right. Now, at the end here, I just want to wish everybody a good day. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> don't worry, if you can't do it, I see some comments saying they're not able to do it. Keep going, keep trying. That's the thing, okay? You keep doing it, you're gonna be able to succeed one day, okay? So at the end here, I just want to thank everybody. Thank Go Go Kids. Um, Swim in 12 for having me and things like that. Okay, I, okay. All right, and also wishing all our Muslim friends a very happy Hari Raya, okay? And thank you. Hi, Coach Regal and Coach Kwan. Welcome back again. Hey. <laughs> Thank you so much for your sharing through the theory as well as teaching us on the movements I think I have learned and hopefully I can perform better when I go back to the pool. <laughs> Thank you. So is there anything else that you would like to share with us before we say bye-bye to all the audience over here? I think it's amazing. It was a really fun session. I'm pretty sure Coach Bagel and I enjoyed a lot. So much interaction here. That was amazing. If you do have the chance, I would like to meet all the, we would like to meet all the students again in our following session, right? That would be really amazing. Yes. And yes, of course- definitely. And then we got so many comments saying that, right, oh, you right. guys are good teacher, you guys are good teacher. That, fantastic. Thank you, thank you. And how about Coach Bego, is there anything else that you would like to share? Um, I just want to say, for those of you who are having trouble with the exercises, keep at it you're going to have a head okay
All right. Sorry, uh, Coach Beg Coach Bego. We actually missed the last part because of the, the mic. So maybe you can repeat one more time so that all the kids could catch you. All right. Sure. Okay. Sorry, so not a problem. <laughs> uh, so I was saying that if you were having trouble with some of the exercises, don't worry. Keep at it. Okay. And then you'll get it one day. And then when the pool reopens, you'll have a head start in getting better at swimming. Okay. That's it. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much. And then once again, if you have taken any pictures or videos, right, remember to upload it to Facebook as well as Instagram. And then you can hashtag as well. Ta -da! Yes, we have hashtag go kids, hashtag learn at home and hashtag swim in 12. And then, right, before we end this session, I have one last question, you know. I am pretty sure that um, the kids would love to know. So the name is actually Swim in 12. But why 12? All right, so 12, 12 here represent the hour, okay? We are famous for teaching kids with water phobics or fear of water, and we are famous for delivering the result within 12 hours. If within 12 hours, your kid still does not know how to swim yet, we will keep teaching on, okay? Depends on the program oh, that you do, right? And that's what oh, we are that's fantastic. What we're doing. Yes, I've yes. been spending like um 12 years and I'm not I'm still not good at swimming. <laughs> so hopefully I can learn it better over here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Coach Juan, and thank you, uh, Coach Bagel. We hope to see you soon. Thank you. And right. everyone thank you. here. Bye-bye.